When I was a kid, my way to primary school went through the Cologne Zoo. Since then, I always wanted to see those animals in the wild, and especially the orangutans in the jungle. Being a climber myself, I immensely admire the way how they moved through the canopy. It was not until 2011 that I finally came to Sumatra to see orangutans in their natural habitat. The orangutans are the Asian species of extant great apes. Orangutans are currently found in only the rainforest of Borneo and Sumatra. Only since 1996, they have been divided into two species, the Bornean orangutan and the Sumatran orangutan. The absence of tigers in Borneo may explain why Bornean orangutans can be found on the ground more often than their Sumatran relatives and thus become bigger and heavier. Orangutans are the most arboreal of the great apes and spend most of their times in trees. Orangutans live solitary most of their lives, with social bounds occurring primarily between mothers and their dependent offspring, who stay together for the first years. Fruit is the most important component of the orangutan's diet. However, the apes will also eat vegetation, bark, honey, insects and even bird eggs. They can live over 30 years in both the wild and captivity. Orangutans are among the most intelligent primates. They use a variety of sophisticated tools and construct elaborate sleeping nests each night from branches and foliage. The apes have been extensively studied for their learning abilities. Studies showed, for example, that orangutans can use calculated reciprocity, which involves weighting the costs and benefits of gift exchanges and keeping track of these over time. Orangutans are the first non-human species documented to do so. Orangutans are very technically adept nest builders, making a new nest each evening in only 5 to 6 minutes and choosing branches which they know can support their body weight. There may even be distinctive cultures within populations. Both the orangutan species are considered to be endangered, with the Sumatran orangutan being critically endangered. Human activities have caused severe declines in the populations and ranges of both species. Threats to wild orangutan populations include poaching, habitat destruction and the illegal pet trade. Sumatran orangutan's population declined by 80% in 75 years. Estimates between 2000 and 2003 found only 7,300 Sumatran orangutans. This species is now found only in the northern part of Sumatra, with the most of the population inhibiting the Loisa ecosystem. This is where I want to go. I'm an archer, a region of Indonesia located at the northern end of Sumatra. The 
province of Aceh has the highest proportion of Muslims in Indonesia, mainly living according to Sharia, customs and laws. was the closest point of land to the epicenter of the massive 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake, which triggered a tsunami that devastated much of the western coast of the province, including part of the capital of Banda Archer. Here, in the village of Lokna, four out of five people died when the huge tsunami wave hit land. This is Alex, one of the lucky survivors who now rents out surfboards to the few tourists who come into the still unknown region. So, uh, when the tsunami came, I was just got up in the morning and then so my friend told me, uh, running, running, and then still have one people from, yeah, from my village too, also say, ah, the equip, you know, so and then so many broken, like some stuff, something in, in, in room, so like broken, and then so many people coming, uh, running, you know, but they say, Go, 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 because the tsunami came. Um, but, so people don't know the tsunami, they just say, this water from the ocean is coming to the, to the land. Yeah, and yeah. so I'm running, heading around maybe 200 meters from the, my, my house. And then so the water hit me in water. So just, I don't know, so many things, many stuff, many coral, you know, like uh, sand or wood trees, everything. So I'm in water, so, may, so like back, you know, in water too deep. I don't know, so have like a whole time, you know, like this, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. My t-shirt finished loose, you know, and then my brochure too, also nothing. You know? So I am like this, lay down like this, so many trees. I thought my body, I think maybe five meters, uh, the trees. Uh, I didn't know, maybe like wood, some everything, you know. Yeah. And when I, so and my friend say, hello, hello, help me, help me, you know. And so some, my friend coming, take some wood, everything in my body, you know. So my body like many blood. I don't know from the wood, maybe corals, thing, everything. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I look you so like like flat, like after finish boom, you know. So nothing. I don't know this name or tsunami. I don't know them. So just so after tsunami, have like twenty five percent. Okay. Forty percent like that, you know. Wow, wow, wow. So in in always in in my room in in my village uh, house. Before I have like uh, five, no, have like one, and then the boy only boy one, you know, yeah. alive. Yeah, yeah, okay. So wow. in my village, so before many people in my village full, you know, but now after tsunami, nothing. Have like yeah. some people still alive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody see it and then take some fish, you know, because so many fish. Yeah. Ah. And they see ah fish, you know. So people say, I think it's like low tide, you know. But so the people take some uh, some fish and then after around I don't know five five minute or ten minute then the water very fast coming big okay. big set wow. everyone not serving normally we go to serving but the tsunami came no nobody I want to serve you know big and like thirty meter height okay but now so we serve together with some boys you know happy you know because so we serve together but for life. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Approximately 170,000 Indonesians were killed or went missing in the disaster, and approximately 500,000 were left homeless. This event, though, helped trigger the peace agreement between the government of Indonesia and the Free Archer movement in 2005. This conflict in Archer stems from several major factors, including historical mistreatment, disagreement over Islamic law, discontent over the distribution of Archer's natural resources wealth, and the increase in the number of Japanese in Archer.
The civil war between rebels of the Free Archer movement against the Indonesian government lasted for different reasons till 2005. As terrible as this was for people. In the Gayo Highlands of Sumatra, this civil war at least slowed down logging and fragmentation by roads, as well as the conversion of vast areas of tropical forest to palm oil plantations. The first weeks I tried to visit as many places along the coastline as possible and spent some entire days in the water, surfing and snorkeling. The most important thing though is that I practice my shooting skills with wildlife. I have the then brand new Panasonic Lumix GH2 with me with a 14 to 140 mm zoom. This lens gives me the equivalent of a 280 mm telephoto reach, which in itself is not nearly enough for wild animals. The GH2 has an additional reach crop mode though that gives more than 700 mm telephoto reach. Of course, this kind of reach makes hand holding extremely tricky and even with my small Manfrotto 560B video tripod it is very hard to achieve stable shots. I really should have brought the heavier and smoother 701 HD video tripod. But then Everything here is so strenuous that I cannot see myself schlepping around any more gear. Talking about gear, I also have the 7 to 40 mm wide angle zoom and the 20 mm pancake lens for the GH2 and also a GoPro HD and the iPhone G4 with me. Everything you see in this film is shot with either of these cameras and lens combinations. My days are just packed during the first weeks and I'm exhausted every evening. fantastisch indischer ozean praktisch der nördlichste punkt indonesiens eigentlich theoretisch könnte man nach thailand schwimmen nicht wirklich weil die strömungen viel zu stark sind
on the neck necklace
Sommertraben wird mir dann ähm, wie ein Traum vorkommen. Wie ein Traum, sowohl im Guten wie im Bösen. Also teilweise wie ein ganz, ganz toller Traum und teilweise so ein bisschen in Richtung äh, Albtraum. When I finally feel fit enough in these tropical conditions, when I finally figured out the camera settings and made myself a Jedi shooter to focus calmly even under pressure, moving in fluid Tai Chi motion through the most difficult terrain possible, when I'm ready, I have to face the part of my trip I'm the most afraid of. The 400 kilometers drive from the coast into the Gayo Highlands. I will meet my friend Stefan in the village of Kedar, from where we will explore the more than 1500 meters high rainforest in this part of the Gunung Loiser Park for one week. 400 kilometers doesn't sound a lot, but on these terrible roads it takes us a good 17 hours. I'm really not made for this kind of passive traveling and I'm uncomfortable during the whole trip and more and more people squeeze themselves into the tiny minivan.
Here, in the center of the Gayo Highlands, I really enter another world. A world commanded by the laws of the jungle. Orangutan, uh, excuse me, hello, you friend. Thank you so much. Yeah, you all give up. No problem. This orangutan here from the jungle, there's a step and already looking. Very hungry, just take this tree. This is a tiger. Say lot. Maybe <laughs> five meters from me. Excuse me, my friend. I please you go. I like the from the walk. Like the walk that the this tiger goes slowly. Uh -huh. Slowly. No problem. This go from there. Sometimes I like the from the my heart. Very hungry from the heart. I'm the hungry from the tiger. Then this tiger from me. Yeah, the hungry tiger from me. Yeah. Me no like hungry. Okay, just hello, my friend. This place you go. I like the walk this from the jungle. This is you, Ariel. This is the voice of Mr. Jolly, who once in his colorful life was a rebel, hiding in and operating out of the jungle. He nowadays guides in. Make no mistake, you need a guide in the steep rainforest. As climbers, we are used to move through a difficult terrain. But here we struggle to simply follow our guides, our eyes glued to the muddy and slippery ground. When I come to the park, I have feeling this direction I will touch. So now, uh, in beginning, I will explain you example. We have to go this way, this way, this way. But then when I have arrived in, in, the, in the jungle, so then it's uh, like, uh, I don't know how you say it in English. Uh, something like, ah, should you go this way? Then they will move in, then they will make a sound because they are scared. Uh, but it's not good for, for uh, in future because they're more sensitive. Because they, they, they can be stretched. Uh, if too many people they do like that, they can be stretched. Uh, and they move to some other area maybe. Huh? Yeah, exactly. So oh. then when they smelling of a human and then they will shed. Yeah. And then they will scare. Most is uh, birds eating this one, but also the orangutan they eat this one. If we want to look up, we have to stop. If we stop, we have to hold ourselves onto something, since the terrain is so steep. If it doesn't work, what I can do? Water? No, if it doesn't work, what I can do? So I hope it should work. Okay. 
Uh, it is the root of uh, the poison leaf. Uh, they will, uh, when we put it like that, so then they will go, uh, it's by belief, yeah, by yeah. belief. Yeah, yeah. So then they will back again to the okay. plant, the okay. poison. Okay. That's why uh, we use it, uh, na uh, nature medicine. Okay. If we hold on to something, we have to check first if it's not spiky or poisonous. One time I touch a poisonous leaf. While I'm still whining from the pain, a bee crawls under my shirt and stings. No pain in two parts of my body almost cancels itself out, but makes me feel weak, incompetent and out of place. What a contrast to our guides. While we are maxed out keeping their pace, they observe the canopy with unbelievable vision, roll another cigarette with one hand and clear path for us. All their senses seem to be optimized for navigation in the jungle and are working in concert to give information about our surroundings. We are equally fascinated by their skills as we are by the wildlife they bring to our attention. gerade bestimmt zehn Minuten in äh Das ist gut, ja.
Ja, wir sind jetzt hier den ersten Tag in, in Petambe im Urwald. 1000 Meter tiefer, also ungefähr auf äh, 400 bis 600 Meter Höhe. Und ich bin gerade schon, hat sehr unliebt seine Bekanntschaft mit einem stechenden Blatt gemacht, mit einem giftigen Blatt. Und ich bin von der Biene in den Bauch gestochen worden. Also irgendwie ein wesentlich feindseliger Urwald. Kommt es mir jetzt gerade vor. Viel wärmer, allerdings nicht so steil. Ja, vom Klima her ein bisschen unangenehmer. Äh, oder was heißt unangenehmer? Man ist nicht so leistungsfähig. Und es wird empfohlen, diese Leech Socks zu tragen. But the uh, orang utans and the macaques are not together very often, are they? Uh, some, sometimes, just sometimes. Yeah. I know because I'm an uh, observer. I know uh, about that. Is uh, my grandfather before they had a say like that. When there's some birds, you can you can. Uh, really see or really hearing yeah, what yeah. happened tomorrow. Uh. Oh, oh, Then all the mountain they have uh, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. They connect, connect, connect. Yeah, connect. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a black gibbon, they make a puist is very happy. Yeah. Uh, when the before, uh, for example, today is uh, still uh, cloudy. Tomorrow will be will be dry session. Uh, they make a loud, make yeah. a puist. It's very happy. Also, like a uh, white gibbon, uh, they almost same. One fantastic animal we hear very often are the black and white gibbons. After we recognize the voices, we pretty much hear them all the time, in fact. But we rarely see them, since gibbons are masters of swinging from branch to branch for distances of up to 50 meters at speeds as high as 55 km per hour. They can also make leaps of up to 8 meters, what makes them the fastest and most agile of all the three dwelling non-flying mammals. What also makes them a lot harder to spot than the orangutans though, is that gibbons are not making Super. nests for the night. This is our only strategy for the orangutans. Oh, to hopefully nicht. watch them preparing a nest at dusk, returning to camp in pitch blackness, getting up well before sunrise, rushing back to this place only the guides could memorize, and finding the orangutans still oh, a bit so sleepy from the night. Das ist noch nicht mehr gut, ne? Ja doch, jetzt, 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 jetzt. For the first days though, this strategy is not working and I find myself daydreaming and losing all hope that I will see an orangutan in the wild. Till? Well, till when you see one. A changing looks with a wild orangutan is a life-changing experience. They are in control with how long this encounter lasts. 
Sometimes they're curious, sometimes they want to intimidate us, and sometimes they just shit on us. But when they leave into the deeper jungle, after the period they allowed us to be in their presence, it feels like a loss on our side, like saying goodbye forever to a loved human being.